The reason we're doing algebraic proofs is because they're doing them in geometry and be introducing the idea of proofs. So let's start with looking at these properties. The very first one is called the addition property of equality. And the thing is, is you guys have worked with all of these already because you do all of this stuff to be able to solve equations. And the first one says that if you have two things that are equal to each other, and you add the same thing to both of them, then what you end up with will be something that is equal. It's like adding the same number to both sides. Subtraction property of equality is that if two things are equal and you subtract the same thing from both sides, those two things are also going to be equal. Multiplication property of equality. If you have two things that are equal and then you multiply both of them by the same number, you're going to get something that's still equal. It doesn't change it as long as it's the same. The division property of equality. If you have two things that are equal and you divide by the same number, that's not zero, because you can't divide by zero, then you're still going to end up with something that's equal. So when I say we've been doing this already, it's because that's how we've been solving equations. You guys have been writing algebra proofs since the first day we started, when we started doing out equations. You just didn't write them the same way we're going to write them today. So we're just going to change the format of how we do it. And you're going to need to know these phrases here. Because when we do a proof, you have to state why you're doing what you're doing. And it's going to be these properties. There's other properties, too. Some we use in algebra, and some you're going to use mostly in geometry. The reflexive property of equality says that A equals A. This one is weird. It's like saying something equals itself. It's kind of so obvious that you can't even imagine why someone would make it a property. The way to remember it for geometry was reflexive sounds like reflect, which is like a mirror. If you look in the mirror, you get a reflection of yourself. That's kind of what this is. Symmetric property of equality. This is one we do use in algebra. So it says if A equals B, then B equals A. And that's still kind of a duh, yeah. But how this shows up when we use it in algebra, so let's say you solved an equation, and 2 equals x was the solution. And then at the very end, you wanted to rewrite it because you like the x to come first. The reason you're allowed to do that in math is called the symmetric property of equality. Transitive property, you've probably seen that before. Some teachers call it the leapfrog property. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So it's like you can just sort of jump over B. We won't use that in here as much. <coughs> Geometry is going to use that one a lot. Uh, so the substitution property of equality, you can use this one in algebra. It says if A equals B, then A may be replaced by B in any equation or expression. So here's an example of when that could happen. Let's say you have 3x plus 5 plus 3 equals 12. And in the next line, you write 3x plus 8 equals 12, because that's what we would do. Whenever you're combining like terms or simplifying, you are substituting. The 8 was now substituted for the 5 plus 3. So if you're doing a proof in geometry where it's an algebraic proof and you have to do something where you are combining like terms, You know, if you think to yourself, that's what you're doing, then the, the reason you're allowed to do that, the law, if you want to think of it that way, is the substitution property of equality. Distributive property, well, we know that one. We will use that one today, too. And most of the ones we're going to be using are the first four, because those are the ones we use to solve equations. All of these types of problems are going to be like equations that we've done before, but now we're just doing them in a different format. And the language is all really, really formal. So if given 5x plus 1 equals 26, we're supposed to prove that x equals 5. 
And I'm walking you guys through this so you can kind of see how to write it. It isn't like whether or not you know how to solve that equation. You do know how to solve that equation. This is telling you that the answer is 5. So how do you write that up as a proof? First off, we're going to make a two-column proof because that's the format that they're going to be using in geometry class. It's my favorite format too, so it's cool. So you make yourself a little two-column chart. We're going to write statements here <coughs> and reasons here. We're going to make statements, and then you have to make reasons for why you can make that statement, and we number them. The very first one is always whatever is given. 5x plus 1 equals 26. On these algebraic proofs, that's how we always start. You write the problem, and then you write the word given. What's the reason I can make the statement 5x plus 1 equals 26? And the reason is because it's given. This is very lawyer-like. This is very formal. You don't have to show all of your work if you don't want to. You can show work, and I'll show you what that looks like. But right now, I'm just going to make a statement and give a reason for my statement. I'm going to make the statement that 5x equals 25. Before I give you my reason, look at where I was, and then look at what I wrote next, and think to yourself, what did I do? Yeah, I subtracted 1 from both sides. The reason I can do that has to come from the chart. So go back up to the chart of properties, and when you're doing proofs, everything we write down for reasons is going to be one of these guys, as soon as I fold this. It's going to be one of these guys, right here. So the one that applies is the subtraction property of equality. So that's what I'm going to write here, and I'm going to abbreviate that. Instead of writing out the whole word subtraction, I'm going to put S-U-B-T period. Nothing wrong with writing out the whole thing if you want to, but you can abbreviate it. Subtraction property of equality. Now, what I'm writing in black is what I want to see. What I'm writing in pink is work I'm doing in my head, but you can also write that in here. If you, let's leave a blank line in between so you can put your work in there if you want to see it. That's personal preference at this point. Even for me now in class on quizzes or tests, if you want to just write statements, you can do that. You don't have to show me all the little steps because I can read these things. Okay, three, I'm making a statement. X equals five. And the reason I can do that is dependent on what I did. I had to do something to get to that. I divided both sides by 5, and I'm allowed to do that. That's legal because of the division property of equality, and that's the rule I write down over here. Division property of equality. So your reasons are not the what you did. Your reasons are the why you're allowed to do it. And that's going to be, this is the hardest part for proofs for a lot of kids when they're first starting to learn them. So we teach it with algebra because we're more familiar with solving algebra equations than you are with solving geometry stuff. Let's do another example. Given and prove. They all start out like this, and there will always be a chart. I'll give you a second to copy the, the format, and then I'm going to stick the problem in there. Okay, given that 4 times x plus 2 equals 12. We have to prove that x equals 1. The start is the same for everybody. The first line is always given. So if you know what the reason is, you can go back in and go, oh, they must want me to copy that, and that's exactly what we want you to do. If you guys were doing this by yourself, your second and third step could be different. The person sitting next to you might do different things than what you're about to do. I'm going to make a statement, and I want you to figure out what I did. My second statement is going to be 4x plus 8 equals 12. I didn't show you what I was going to do. Figure out what I did. Tell me what I did. You multiplied 4 by the 7. I did. What's that called? 
Okay, that's the law. That's the property. So you can write distributive property. And we can abbreviate that. Someone else would have started that by dividing both sides by four. I like that move. Three, my next statement is 4x equals 4. You have to figure out what I just did. You don't have to show the work. If you can make the right statements, I'll follow it. You subtracted 8. I did. For people who like to show the work. Subtraction. Yes. And we're going to abbreviate that sub t property of equality. You can't just use sub because we have a substitution property too, so there would be some confusion there. If someone's reading your proof, they may not know what you mean. My statement is x equals 1. What is my reason? What's I did. Division property of equality. What I noticed yesterday doing this, I did this in all the classes yesterday, what I noticed is that some people who are having some difficulty with solving equations, things started to click because writing out the reasons of what you're doing is kind of like a blueprint of how to solve an equation. So if you're studying for a retake where you're just having to solve equations for me, like a two-step equation or a multi-step equation, these proofs kind of give you the steps in order of what you're doing. Anybody want to ask me any questions about this so far? One more example, and then you're going to do some triads. We're going to do given. We're going to do prove. And we need to make a chart. And I never know exactly how big to make the chart because you can have more steps. You can take as many steps as you want to take. Some things go pretty quick, but if you have a one that's kind of like complicated, like this one, given 3 plus 4 times x minus 2 equals 27. You have something like that. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. So how many steps it takes, how many statements you make, that doesn't matter. We're going to prove that x equals 8. Your first statement is always your given. All right, second statement I'm going to make. Again, I'm going to write the statement. You're going to figure out what I did. My second statement is 4 times the quantity x minus 2 equals 24. I subtracted 3 from both sides, but I did it in my head. I'm not expecting everyone to do it in their head, but if you can do it in your head, this is how you can solve equations for me now. You can skip all these little steps where you write things underneath. I'm down with you guys not doing that anymore. This is the subtraction property, which we use a lot. All right, number three. You can do something different if you want to, but I'm going to pull this move right now. X minus 2 equals 6. Something unexpected. Yeah. Yes. If you want to do distributive property, do distributive property. There were two different ways to go from this point. And I did distributive property in the last one, so this one I wanted to do the division. The division doesn't always work. And so this one is the division property of equality. That's why we have to read your proofs. My last statement, I'm not going to write this statement. I'm going to tell you the reason. And you come up with whatever the statement, would I, you, what I'm thinking. You fill in this blank here that I'm thinking, but I'm telling you I'm going to use the addition property of equality. So you think about what the statement is. If anyone thinks they have it, let me know. X equals 8. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you can show the work. Absolutely. Because for visual learners, you're going to want to see what you're doing. But for people who are doing the mental math, you guys can give me the, what I'm writing in black, and I'm fine for equations right now.